Oh, welcome to the Think Big series brought to you by PSG. My name is Dan Hugo and I'm the Chief Executive for Distribution for PSG Consult. Um, as a leading independent financial services group, PSG has an extensive national footprint uh, across the country. Uh, we also have a presence in Namibia and we've been in operation since uh, 1998, uh, August of 1998 in fact, and we pride ourselves in providing a bigger picture approach uh, to our clients' uh, financial needs. Um, wealth management, uh, financial planning, short-term insurance, uh, fiduciary services, um, as well as short-term insurance. Uh, we have an advice-led business backed by some of, and I believe, the best independent financial advisors in the country. Now, the Think Big series is a, is a collection of dialogues with high value speakers hosted by the award-winning uh, financial journalist. He's now also, also an author, Bruce Whitfield. Now each topic we will address will be a human truth, human truth issues that are currently causing South Africans, you know, a lot of um, anxiety and creating you know, an immense amount of, of uncertainty. Now this series aims to empower us with uh, our audience with factual evidence to, so that we may formulate our own opinions, uh, manage our expectations and other various aspects of, uh, of this uncertain time that we are currently in is going to impact um, our future, how we make decisions in the future, um, our financial well-being, our personal well-being, um, and we'll see you know, how this situation unfolds. So in today's webinar, Bruce will be talking, talking to um, Herman Mashaba. Herman is, a, is an entrepreneur. Um, he entered politics in 2015. Um, Herman took the decision that one cannot just be an armchair critic. Um, you know, if one wants to criticize, um, you know, roll up your sleeves um, and get into the fray. And he was appointed the executive mayor for the city of Johannesburg in 2016 with a mandate for change. So while he received a lot of acclaim for his hands-on approach, uh, his approach to service delivery, um, innovative partnership with, uh, with the private sector, um, zero tolerance for, for corruption, maladministration, he ultimately resigned from the Democratic Alliance in, uh, in August of, of 2019, um, consequently resigned as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg um, in November 2019. So, Herman strongly believes in non-rationalism, the free market economy, um, social justice, the, the rule of law, and, uh, and electoral reform principles. So our campaign social media hashtag will be or is hashtag ThinkBigPSG. And feel free to share this series uh, with friends, colleagues, anybody that you may, may feel is interested uh, in the in the content and the information that we're sharing with you, whether you're a client of PSG or not. Bruce, of course, needs very little introduction. Over to Bruce. Chairman Mashaba is our guest. He is the accidental mayor. It is the title of a brand new book by his former chief of staff, Michael Beaumont, which landed on my desk fairly recently. And if you've been out to the shops in the lockdowns, uh, you would have seen it adorning shelves of bookshops. And if you like stories that keep you awake into the night with horror stories, this is Bram Stoker's Dracula has got nothing on this. This is a proper horror story about the real world and the sordid world of politics works. It's a story of backstabbing, of manipulation, of mismanagement, of Machiavellian tendencies. Herman Mashaba, when you signed up for politics, did you ever think that it would get as down and dirty as it did? To be honest with you, uh, uh, Bruce and uh, people of South Africa and PSG, thank you very much uh, for firstly giving me this great opportunity to really engage uh, and engage on the future of South Africa because I think it's, it's a very important subject matter that we should not really shy away from. Bruce, when I got into, I uh, signed up uh, for this job uh, 
for me, my number one priority was to unseat the ANC because I realized having the ANC as, gov as government of this country, this country, you don't have to have a mind like uh, Einstein. This country is going to collapse. So I needed to really stop uh, this uh, collapse. And I said, uh, if not to me, who else should really do it? In terms of corruption, I knew there was corruption. But I did not realize uh, to, uh, to the extent to which people would uh, go to, uh, to protect corruption, to protect maladministration. Mal because I took uh, over a government uh, that is dominated by patronage network. People in senior positions were not in positions because of what they, know, they knew. They were in positions because of uh, who they knew. So, it is really very difficult when you've got to operate, take over in an administration like that because local government in South Africa is a very, very highly regulated in, in environment. And the ANC has mastered over the, the last 26 years uh, uh, to, uh, to infiltrate uh, the entire organization, our country, to be run on a purely on a, on a patronage network, not on, on what people knew. I mean, you didn't want the job. You even took a flight at your own expense to the United States to go and see Lindiwe Mazubuko, who had been um, a leader of the Democratic Alliance and she had left, of course, and had gone to Harvard to further her studies. You went to go and try and convince her you, that she wasn't going to accept your hospital pass. I mean, you knew that you didn't really <laughs> want the job. And when she wouldn't accept it, you then went, all right, I'll take the job. But I mean, did you have any sort of T's and C's when you, you went into the job? No, well, I think, you know, uh, uh, Bruce, I had a privilege over the last 36 years of my life running business uh, and, and and really had fun. And I thought I was hardworking, you know, man. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I, you know, I started business career at the age of 22 during the dark days of this country's history when as a black man, I was not allowed to. And, uh, you know, I used to I tell people, I tell my kids, they don't believe them. They don't believe me when I tell them. I used to do plus minus 10,000 kilometers uh, uh, a month. And more especially in the beginning of my business career, I still needed to carry the passbook, that reference book, which you needed your white employer to sign it on a month to month basis. So every morning when I left home, you're not sure whether you're going to come back uh, because uh, you'd really be arrested for being at the wrong place at the wrong, at the, at the wrong time. So I thought you really. Uh, uh, over the, the years of building my business empire, I worked hard until I got into the job. I used to really com uh, complain and uh, jokingly to Mike Moriarty because Mike Moriarty played a key role in convincing me to, uh, to eventually take over this job. Because I realized, if not me, who? Because when I looked at the, the DA's uh, um, the mayoral candidates, I realized there's still no chance uh, with, the, with, with, the, with the ANC. That is why I had, uh, I had to get Mike uh, to get me uh, Lindu Emasibu's contact details because I've heard of this lady. I'd never met her uh, in, in, in my life. Uh, so I said to Mike, what about uh, let's try this woman uh, because um, the media, everybody's raving about her. Let's get her. I like you. You get a capitalist like me <laughs> into, into this uh, political field, you know. So I got her full contact details, I dropped an email, I said, uh, you know what, uh, uh, I'm coming to the States, can I come and see you? I'd like to come and have dinner with you. Gladly she accepted. So I flew all the way, spent two great nights with her. The first night, uh, when she actually went to watch uh, the, sh uh, the sh uh, Black uh, my Bazo were playing at the university in the snow. The following night, that's when um, we went, to, she took me to a nice restaurant with snow outside and I shared my reason for being there. Unfortunately, uh, outright, uh, she, uh, she said, look, heaven, uh, leave me out of this. And I now come back disappointed and said, what the hell there? And obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the firing of uh, Minister Nene was the final blow. That's when I, I said to Mike and the D, I said, guys, I'm ready, let me really do it. And obviously, firstly, I had to really get the permission of my wife um, and my mm -hmm. children. And uh, it says that um, it's either we leave the country or or you participate. And, and I had that, that blessing and I threw that in the ring.
Was it a mistake? I mean, based on what you now recall from those days, Lindy Wimmer's book effectively was warning you off, saying, you don't want to do this job. I don't want this job. Um, I doubt very much that you actually want this job. But you went for it anyway. Um, you've never been one to shy away from a challenge or from a fight that you believed was, was worth having. Was it a mistake in retrospect? to? No, in, in fact, I think... You know, uh, Bruce, as much as uh, this job was uh, the most punishing job, you know, ever since I took over this job, hardly three months I had to start to actually using sleeping tablets. I had to go and look uh, give specialists. Even up to today, I can't sleep without uh, sleeping tablets because uh, I need my brain, my brain to have at least five, six hours sleep. Otherwise, if I don't use uh, um, sleeping tablets, I can't. Because honestly, going to work, like, like it was like going to war. Uh, you remember when I took over, you know, to, to non-politician, I didn't even know what people do in, in a council. I'm told I'm a, I'm a leader of caucus, I'm leader of, 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 of council. What do, what do people do in council? You get about that's how ignorant that was. You had to ask the security guard when you arrived where the office was. I mean, you were, that's yes, I mean, I, we're completely green. Yeah, no, I had no clue what to, what what do people do in council and and how do you run this machinery. But I said, oh, obviously, if um, if the if the stacks, if uh, there's uh, crooks and uh, looters can run it, I'm sure I can do it. That's how. If you uh, you, I don't know if you read my book, my autobiography called Black Like You. You know. Mm. I'd never driven a car before in my life. I wanted to go into business and the only way I could go into business, the, the cheapest, quickest, effective way was to become a commission sales rep. And I needed a car and I needed a brand new car because I didn't want to buy a score or car. <laughs> then every second day I'm, I'm stuck. So I read it. I'd never driven a car before. And when I bought my car to, from Lodian to uh, the Carbine Motors in, in Victoria, the, the biggest Toyota dealers, and I was working for Motani the Industries at the time. So I said to my wife, but honestly, on that day, I wasn't going to buy the car, to be honest. I just went in to go and start making preparations for when, I went, when it was time for me to buy the car. Unfortunately, or fortunate enough for me, when I got there, uh, they were this new great uh, Toyota Corolla Toro, they were just being introduced. Uh, 6,800, very expensive uh, car, 6,000 brand new. And I had, uh, I think, about 3,000 rands of uh, deposits. So they said, uh, if you're interested, deposit, what deposit they needed, I uh, think about uh, just over 2,000 or something. But I had 3,000 deposits. So they said, uh, to, uh, to give us the check, gave them the check. There was West Bank in in, uh, in 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 the in the store, and then this guy is half an hour or so ago. To, uh, they come back to tell me West Bank has approved my <laughs> my application, and the one that says you can have your car. I had not driven a car in, in my life. My goodness, what well, I remember, my uh, my wife uh, was reluctant, and I said, please don't tell these people I've never driven before. I said, let's just just get them to get it out of the world at the showroom, they bring it uh, upstairs. And the reason why I did that, because uh, looking at the taxis, I used to every time when I would get into the taxi, I'd sit in the front seat to see what they were doing, because I didn't want to go and spend money with uh, drive, uh, drive, uh, driving schools. I said, if these guys can do it, I can also do it. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I mean, so, are, are you suggesting for a moment that uh, Joburg was being run like a taxi driver drives a taxi down Jan Smart's Avenue? No, no, West Side, no, definitely. No, Western, no, Western, honestly, I think if I look at what the taxi drivers do and what ANC does in government, honestly, or, well, they're not comparable. Honestly, the, the taxi drivers are doing a much better job in, in driving taxis than ANC running government. Let's focus in a little bit on doing the job and actually learning then how the mechanics of government works. And it's a completely different world for you. It's a brand new world for you. And you set about slowly, and it is a slow process, dismantling the patronage networks that you come across. And you get a huge amount of resistance, not only from the ANC, but you also start getting a huge amount of resistance from the EFF, because this has been quite a nice collaborative little party up until now. Not, not really. The EFF actually uh, 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 
for you know to my surprise the Bruce the the longer our our relationship and our coalition succeeded the more support I was getting from the EFF in fact the the reason the biggest in all the coalition part, uh, partners the seven way coalition the the biggest partner in this unfortunately became the DA uh, the EFF were very supportive ANC were determined I mean on a daily basis uh, if they could find a way to, to to get rid of me they would really do it uh, by any means necessary so and and uh, uh, EFF really supported me. But uh, you know what, were they easy to partners? Absolutely not. But uh, they were very supportive. Uh, how, do, how you ask yourself, how did I manage to really get rid of uh, senior ANC top structures? Uh, you know, because of the, in, in, in local government to get rid of section 56 managers, the process, uh, <laughs> Bruce, it's mind-boggling. We think we've got draconian labor laws. You know, like labor laws in this country ever since the way it, uh, they were introduced, uh, I've always called them openly, unapologetically, they, they were dra that draconian. Now you can imagine now, please uh, just look at the, uh, the two uh, legislation controlling municipalities. Like the Systems Act and the Structural Act. I think this NC must have developed uh, this uh, the two pieces of legislation to ensure that they can still with impunity and make it difficult to get rid of them. But look at look at how many of them I managed to get rid of. I, I think I must have fired the more senior people um, in the municipalities, like all the municipalities combined in in twenty in twenty years. But I mean, you, you, you didn't make many friends in that process, not only within the ANC, of course, but within your own political party. And there's a slow burn implosion happening within the Democratic Alliance. We went to the last general elections and the Democratic Alliance lost a little bit of ground. Musi Maimani was held culpable for that as leader of the party. And the same guys who had managed to oust Helen Zilla to put in Musi Maimani then turned on my money. Is that where you then lost faith in the Democratic Alliance project? Well, you know, fort fortunate enough, uh, Bruce, uh, um, if uh, you, uh, people have really studied me, I made it abundantly uh, from day one that I'm not here to make friends. In all the meetings, in all public meetings, I would really want everybody to really know that, guys, I'm not here to make friends. I've got just too many friends, but one thing for sure, I'm one person who, who I value friendship. I value friendship, but it must not really be the kind of friendship that we see happening at some Shebin in Sex and World. I'd always tell them in, in official public meetings, I'll tell them if you want the kind of friendship that has been happening in the city of Job at all this time, go to a Shebin. We've heard of a Shebin in Sex and World. I've never been to that Shebin. We we'll make friendship there. Here, we are here to work and work for society. So. I made, I made that really very clear. So that is why I became really very unpopular uh, with what I eventually called snakes. But fortunate enough, I won the hearts and minds of, of, of the residents of the city of Johannesburg because I was determined to root out corruption. Uh, I was committed in creating a professional public service. I wanted to really bring the private sector to really be our friends in rebuilding the city that was destroyed in just uh, under 20 years. I mean, I remember after Nelson Mandela's uh, victory, uh, I was one of the people invited uh, to the celebration. Uh, we celebrated at the, the ballroom at the Carlton Center. <laughs> That's just a few days ago. I mean, uh, if I may yeah. call it that way. And you look at that city that human beings can destroy a beautiful city like the turn it into a slum in, in 20 years. I think for me it was mind boggling. That is why on the 1st of December 2016, during my 100 days, I committed to the people of Johannesburg that, you know what, I'm going to take back the city from criminal elements, whether they like it or not. And I will work with the private sector to build affordable accommodation for our people and our, and our students. And uh, that made me very unpopular with, um, with, the, with criminal syndicates. But fortunate enough, you know what, I was, not fortunate, I was really fortunate in the sense that um, criminals have never really been an issue for me in my life. I've never been scared of uh, criminals. In fact, uh, the more criminal... Uh, 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 element you uh, uh, inhibit to me, exhibit to me, I can tell you the more yeah. determined you make me because uh, I, I honestly and truly, I hate criminals. 
Where did the wheels come off, though, for you within the Democratic Alliance? Because you resigned, not as mayor of Johannesburg, but you resigned from the DA and by implication, therefore, the city of Johannesburg role. It wasn't that you gave up being mayor. You gave up being mayor, a, a member of the party that had the mayorship of the city. Um, it was a political schism within the Democratic Alliance that got you to leave. Well, I think it's really very unfortunate, um, uh, Bruce, and I think I'm glad uh, uh, that Michael has managed to capture this in the beginning without me knowing that he's writing the book about uh, our, uh, our administration. And from day one, running this complex uh, multi-party uh, arrangement, I requested Michael to deal with uh, party matters because uh, they wanted me to focus more on saving political parties than saving society. And, I, and I've said uh, this to dear DA from day one, that guys, please let us uh, stop uh, this arrogance. This, we are not a DA government, we are DA-led administration. And we are going to adopt uh, a proper uh, uh, government for us, not especially as the DA. We, we had a crisis of being uh, uh, viewed as a white party. And I said to them, the only way we're going to attract, attract the black voters is not going to be political rhetoric that you are talking about. It is going to be about demonstrating to black South Africans that we are there to save them. We are there to even save all the communities. And what is actually quite sad and actually painful for me uh, is the fact that um, the, the, the white electorate in the city of Johannesburg, every time when the DA would moan that uh, we are ignoring their communities, hardly the office, they expected me to turn Johannesburg like Cape Town. Uh, they, they complain about the grass cutting in the in the white neighborhoods. In the meantime, I'm sitting with uh, over 200 informal settlements. People have been living in this informal settlement without toilets, without uh, its services, and so forth. And I would always uh, request, and I'll have public meetings in in affluent areas, without uh, a prepared speech. The white audience will actually afterwards give me a standing ovation to say, Herman, please uh, carry on with this plan. Go and give our fellow South African the, dig uh, the dignity because these are our people working for us. These are our fellow people that uh, we need to build with us. But unfortunately... Why, why, though, why though that, that, did that bite you? Why did that lead to your departure? I mean, I can't understand how in 21st century South Africa, a political party can't be a pro-poor party because ultimately in terms of self-preservation of whatever interest you might have in South Africa, if you're not pro-poor, well then you're anti-poor. If you're anti-poor, you don't have a future. I mean, that, that surely well, is a lot uh, Well, of I think if, if you read the book, uh, including, uh, uh, I remember there's a guy called Herman Pretorius uh, from the IRR. I did not even realize that, uh, you know, in caucus we had our own WhatsApp group. Uh, and I would always complain about this. I would report to these matters to, to Federal Council, to FedEx, on more than one occasion that, guys, we, we've, I've got some resistance from some of our members, and, and they have been driven by forces from outside, where people actually insult me uh, that I'm taking their residence money, spend it uh, in poor communities, people are not voting for them. And uh, they did not, and that's, I think for me, was an insult because uh, uh, it, how can anyone in this day and age, uh, the era actually even think about that when you are prepared uh, to really live with, in this luxury? Uh, I would always even give examples of my own house. I live in a house, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 Bruce, uh, with uh, the, my wife and, 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 and my son, my daughter is in the US with what, uh, six uh, 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 toilets. But I've got people across the street, uh, the free, freeway, who don't have uh, in a family of up to 50 sharing one portable toilet that uh, the city has to clean from time to time. You know, here in Alexander, or you go to Kaya Sins, or you go to, uh, to, uh, to uh, the Orange Farm, I said, we cannot live like this. You take it for an example. Uh, let me give you an example that you so painful. Take Clip Town, you know, in 1954, yeah. where the, the, the Freedom Charter was signed. It had to take a multi-party government to go and actually uh, electrify that area. And she completely forgotten. You go there, it's actually a shame. And, and unfortunately, TA did not really support uh, these policies. Uh, they said, no, 
uh, these people are not voting for us. Why must we, we, we spend uh, money on them? In the meantime, we don't have uh, full control of council. We only have the eight percent of council. But the, the arrogance, uh, that's why in, uh, the, uh, um, there was this threat uh, to unseat uh, um, uh, Musi, and I got to know about it, and, uh, and, and uh, to, to bring in uh, the, the right-wing elements. And I said, uh, you know what, I'm not here for that. Uh, unfortunately, in South Africa, uh, the only way I can save, I have to save under the DA, uh, the banner, if this, party that uh, are dedicated, I left my career for. If that's uh, the, the, the way they want to operate, please let them leave me out. And I decided to step down. Iro ironically, though, the, the, the result of that is an ANC back at the helm of the city of Johannesburg. And just recently, I saw a statement from the EFF youth bemoaning the fact that the ANC mayor of Johannesburg is letting down the residents of Johannesburg and that corruption is making a comeback. Your departure um, put, to, I'm sure, to your mind, um, the, the the crooks back in charge. Um, does that not hurt that you've spent three years of your life um, and that is all kind of evaporating? Any progress that you did make is, is being eroded as we speak. Well, uh, it, uh, without any doubt, it's very painful and also painful in the sense that uh, the DA gave um, uh, um, uh, some DA members uh, gave um, put Jeff Makubu in charge because um, um, for him to really get the majority, uh, uh, DA had to really vote uh, for him. And uh, you remember, immediately after he, uh, he was voted into power, Herman Pretorius from the IRR celebrated this, and Helen Zille. Uh, supported this celebrating the, uh, the collapse of the multi-party government with Jeff McCoover taking over. Someone with um, uh, overwhelming evidence uh, of, uh, of corruption. I, I always tell people, on, on, uh, and it, this is true, you know this uh, land uh, next to uh, Hout Train Station, the prime piece of land of the city of, of people of South Africa. That, uh, that's, uh, that, that area, any time it has to really be declared, declared uh, uh, a, uh, a crime scene because that piece of land was uh, basic, basically donated to the, the, the Guptas. The Guptas never paid a cent for that land. The Guptas were even given the, uh, the permission not to pay for services and under, under uh, Park Stau and, and Jeff McCook. How then do we take this country forward, Herman? I mean, we, 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 both of us, we all know what's wrong with the country. We all know how we've been betrayed and let down over decades um, across many, many facets by politicians in South Africa who claim to have um, the best interests of society at large. But your book displays very clearly how this is a, a system that is ingrained in massive self-interest, uh, in self-employment, in uh, the opportunities that having political power has. How do we move a country like this forward that is so much in the clutches of politicians and the whims of politicians? Look, I think, um... Bruce, for as long as uh, people of South Africa are not going to realize that uh, ANC is going to destroy this country, the sooner we can unseat the ANC, the, the, the better. But how do we then unseat the ANC? People uh, are under impression that you've got to convince uh, die-hard ANC people to see um, uh, the wrongs of the ANC. The, it, it, uh, ANC dads will never see anything wrong with the ANC because uh, they are the biggest beneficiaries. Look at um, the, the results of uh, 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 elections last year. Just under 19 million South Africans did not vote as opposed to just over 17 million. So, and the people that did not go out and vote are really people that uh, you cannot buy them with a t-shirt or a food parcel and so forth. So I think we, we, we need to get South Africans to wake up, to understand that staying away from voting actually, it's actually to allow uh, the, uh, a collapsing ANC to collapse with the country. So we've got to go out uh, in the next elections, we've got to go out in numbers and for me, I don't care which political party they vote for, as long as we can remove the ANC from power. That's the first thing that we've got to do. But at the same time, 
we've got to do away with this uh, socialist or communist nonsense. I think, uh, it's, I, I don't laugh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a kind of nonsense that the South Africa must, I don't know how what can do to remove it from the brains of South Africans, that we need a free market economy. We need small businesses. We need a uh, government that's committed to, to the rule of law. We need to build a non-racial society. And these are things that we must not really take them for granted, going to church and hoping that that will happen. We need to work towards, uh, the, you know, some of those core values I'm talking about. How does the People's Dialogue contribute to that, lead that, change our approach? The People's Dialogue is, it's not a political party, it's a movement. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, and maybe the movement needs to become a political party. Maybe it does a deal with the Democratic Alliance into the future. I don't know. Um, but it's quite hard starting up something brand new from scratch. I mean, you've gone to communities, you've engaged with communities, but people, you know, if you like, if you like all gold tomato sauce, you like all gold tomato sauce, and South African voters are pretty much like that as well, unfortunately. It's hard to change people's minds. Uh, tell me, Bruce, what's easy in life? You know, I was really very fortunate. Uh, you know, I lost my father when I was uh, two years old. So when I opened up to this world, uh, I had uh, my grandfather, who was a, a security guy for the municipality of uh, Karanku. I used to come uh, to Amanskral once a month by bicycle. But uh, this old man, I was everything to him. Um, and uh, every time, every month and when, when he was home, he would really spend as much time as possible with me. And really, uh, uh, the values and the principles that he taught me are invaluable to me. One thing that you, you were talking about, uh, difficult. My grandfather used to tell me, that my boy, one thing that you must understand, this world has never been easy, uh, has never been easy before. It is not easy today. And it's not going to be easy in, in, in a thousand years. The only thing that uh, we must appreciate as human beings is that God has given us this little piece of brain to, to navigate. He said, so please, never in your, your growth or your path to ever take anything for granted. Understand that life is difficult. But one thing for sure is that you use this brain that God gave you to navigate and uh, never be afraid of. Uh, the, the challenges because if you're going to be afraid of challenges my boy you're going to fail you're going to be like me he's actually giving me uh, here himself as an example he says look at me right now uh, my parents failed me i'm a security guy at, uh, standard uh, at, at the gate um to, uh, to, to make sure that everyone come comes in and out he says i don't want you to be like that so the only way you're going to to really be a better person is to make sure that uh, you change life. And once you do have uh, this belief of changing life, you must understand it's going to be tough and uh, uh, to be really prepared for that. And actually taught me to say, look, um, one thing that uh, when you deal with other human beings, don't believe what people tell you. Listen to them, give people an opportunity, but ultimately judge them what you do. And it said to me, those uh, who you've listened to and you've trusted them, if you can, you discover that they, are, they, they have malicious intent, don't give them a second chance. And that's uh, how I've operated. Uh, I'm now a 60-year-old man and, um, and I'm actually benefiting out of that. I work, listen to people, I give people opportunities, but uh, please uh, don't ever uh, try and uh, think that you, you can play uh, um, uh, in a malicious manner with me. And then are you really cut out for politics if you can't play that game? I mean, that strikes me, I mean, reading your book, uh, as the game. You've got to be able to be duplicitous and no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not, uh, I'm not really prepared to really uh, uh, play the, that game. Uh, 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 ask the DA. Uh, ask the, the, the DA. If anyone who's in federal council, every time firing uh, MMCs. I, I remember uh, one time with one M, uh, the one. Uh, I was to fire one MMC and the DA wanted me to give them a week to go and think about it. I said, <laughs> I said guys, here's a report with overwhelming evidence of this guy's corruption. Uh, I said, if you still want time, I'm telling you, I'm happy to step aside 
uh, for a week while you guys are deciding. But I will announce to the nation why I'm why I'm stepping down. That uh, I've got uh, someone with uh, corruption within our party, uh, and the party still wants to think about it. And therefore, I'm not really prepared to really wait. I'll wait for them the day when they decide uh, I can come back. But there's no way that I'm prepared to to compromise myself uh, with with something that is as clear as they like. So I'm I'm not really prepared to really play those uh, political games, uh, uh, and I'm not going to play those games even going forward. So then, tell me about the people's dialogue and how it makes a positive contribution to the future of South Africa in an environment which is so fraught with those games, where those games seem to be the path to political success as much as we may find it reprehensible it's the game that has worked so far can you really change that game well i think it, it is possible is it going to be easy as i said to you earlier or nothing is going to be easy we are busy right now I'm using some of the best lawyers to ensure that we put together a constitution uh for our party that it, uh, that is going to ensure and give us uh, the powers so that um, if we have a snake amongst us, we must immediately kill the snake. And uh, and I used to tell uh, the, the administration and uh, people I work with that, you know, I was brought uh, up in an environment where we, because it was in a village, from time to time we find snakes. And I used to be fascinated by this, that uh, in our community, when we find a snake in our house, people, we, they'll kill it, but after killing it, they'll ban it. <laughs> You know, so I used to use this as an analogy with people to say, guys, you know what? I'm used to snakes in the house. But one thing for sure is that I've been taught by, uh, by my community, if you find a snake, you don't just kill it. You kill it and then you burn it. And uh, that's, uh, that's a kind of constitution that you've got to really put together. That we must be there to, to have ethical leadership. We must be dedicated to saving society. We cannot afford to really do anything that uh, would really compromise us as a party. But one thing for sure is that uh, I want to allow, fortunate enough, I've got experience of running businesses and employing people. Uh, uh, and the only way you can get people to be the best is by encouraging. Yeah, Herman Mashaba, I think we're losing our signal That's there with Herman Mashaba. We, we had a small signal break, there, Herman, but um, uh, let's, let's, let's complain a scenario. Um, next general elections come along. What will that be? 2024. The People's Dialogue um, is a registered political party. It goes to fight the election. You win yourself five seats in Parliament. Would you like more than that? Of course you'd like more. Let's say you have 10 seats in Parliament. You become a substantial player. Um, the ANC gets 48% in the election. And as this is the opportunity to unseat the ANC from power, the chair of the Democratic Alliance, uh, um, Helen Ziller, phones you up and says, Herman, I need your help. Do you step to Helen's aid in her time of need? Where does your allegiance sit with a party that you feel lets you let you down uh, personally and didn't back you when you needed the backing in order to run the city of Johannesburg effectively for the benefit of all of its citizens? Or do you back the political party you believe has let the country down for by then three decades. Okay, let me give you a practical um, scenario because this is not an academic exercise. August this year, I'm launching a political party uh, to prepare ourselves uh, to contest um, local government elections. Um, at this point in time, targeting the three Houting metros, that is Swani, how to Johannesburg and Ukuruleni. Those are sure we're going to contest. Other municipalities, we can only contest uh, once we've done our exercise uh, that these uh, municipalities are winnable, that we've got credible leadership and we've got the resources. So we will use the three metros in Johannesburg because fortunately enough, those ones are winnable. ANC, you know, they got a serious hiding and they're going to get further hiding come 2021. So we will use uh, running uh, uh, the three metros as a platform for 2024. And I've made it clear, um, even today, uh, someone asked me on, on social media, said, 
ampli our in a coalition government uh, in the, the metros we're going to be competing in. In the event we don't get outright majority, we are happy to work with all the other parties as long as not the ANC. There's just no way that I would be associated, I would want any association with the ANC. That, that is very clear. I'll work with the, uh, with, with the DA, I'll work with the uh, uh, EFF, I'll work with the Freedom Front Plus, I'll work with the, all the other parties to form a coalition to take out the ANC. But one thing for sure is, uh, please tell ANC not even to try and really get me to work with them because I will not really be associated with criminal elements. I mean, you, you built a business in South Africa. You've gone into politics in South Africa. You understand both sides of this multifaceted coin. It's a deeply complicated place, made even more complicated and difficult by the fact that COVID-19 uh, caused government to respond uh, through with lockdowns. Those lockdowns have got dreadful economic consequences. This economy is shrinking uh, dramatically and is likely this year to be 10% smaller than it was uh, a year before. And so we've got a really difficult time. And for so many of the people who are watching this video, these are people who run their own businesses or are on the up and up within their corporate careers, what can we do as individual South Africans to ensure that there is a sustainable future, not just for ourselves and our immediate families, that is of course priority number one in every family, but for society at large, because without a stable and happy and more satisfied at least society, we can't sleep at night, can we? Well, I think, you know, uh, uh, Bruce, uh, this is really one of the most uh, frightening aspect of my life um, uh, lately. I think uh, one thing that you must accept, I think you, 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 you work in this field, uh, you've been working in this field for many years, you understand the economic dynamics uh, that um, uh, the South African economy prior to uh, coronavirus was already on a stretcher to be uh, wheeled into, into an ICU. <laughs> Our economy was at that level before uh, we were hit by this uh, coronavirus. Now, this economy is, is like a patient um, already now in, in, in the ICU. Uh, but we don't have uh, the surgeons uh, to sedate uh, to keep this alive. So right now, we, we're in a very precarious, very uh, worrying uh, kind of situation. So the sooner, obviously, we can get the right medical team, uh, but at the same time, the medical team must be supported by economists because that's well and good. You, you can uh, 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 get me out of an ICU, but I get into the normal world, there's no food, and I die from hunger. <laughs> so, I mean, so... So while obviously you, 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 are, you are trying to, you are working hard and appreciate that you're gonna save my life um, from dying from coronavirus, but you put me into a ward, there's no food. <laughs> so I think if government is not going to think uh, to understand the impact of economy, that the damage is actually, COVID-19 is honest, it's like a Sunday school picnic because Right now, as I'm talking to you, uh, Bruce, there are kids in many communities across the country who today, yeah. they're lucky to get one meal. And now you can imagine um, your brain development. Um, so basically you are destroying the lives of, um, of millions of people so overnight. What do, we, what do we do? Um, put the politics aside for a moment and put on your, your business hat again. Uh, and as somebody with business in your blood, with a free market in your blood, what do entrepreneurs, what do business people, you know, what do people uh, who work uh, in business do? I really do. Look, the thing is, uh, unfortunately, business operates within uh, constitutional framework uh, designed by government. Uh, there is uh, this uh, team that uh, the president has put together. It looks like they enjoy uh, controlling our lives. Uh, actually going to an extent of telling me what clothes, you can imagine a 60 year old uh, man be told uh, what clothes uh, to buy and to wear. I mean, you know, that's how crazy it is. So, and unfortunately if you, you as business operate outside that, you, you're going to really be uh, violating their regulations. So I think if business, I would really appeal to business to ask, um, President Ramaphosa, 
to understand that we need business activity. We need commercial activity. That's as well and good. I don't know if he means well by, by saying he's protecting us from coronavirus, but Mr. Ramaphosa, if you are not going to open the economy up, you are killing more people. These numbers that we see on a daily basis um, of for coronavirus compared uh, to, to the children that you are destroying on a daily basis because their parents are unemployed, their parents are unable to really give them the food that can nourish their bodies and their minds, you are creating more damage. So I really like to appeal to the private sector, big business who, pre, who supported several. And I warned them before the Cyril was elected that you are electing the wrong man, Cyril is the wrong man for this country. But obviously some captains of in the industry, they, they believed in it. That's, that's fine. Let us admit we've made a mistake and there's nothing wrong in, 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 in correcting. We've got uh, the, this business, uh, the captains of industry, who are the bigger, where the biggest supporters, I don't know if they're still the biggest supporters of Cyril. Please, open the economy so that um, Mrs. Uh, Kuzayo in Soweto can really be able to really go to work and uh, be able to put food on the table to really bring up their, their kids. I think if big business can assist us in that, because if we are not going to do that, we are going to be destroying, we are killing more people on a daily basis, millions, not uh, two, three hundred dead that we are, that we are seeing, have, uh, that we see on our screens uh, today. Herman Mashaba, the accidental mayor, thank you very much for sharing your insights and giving us your time to talk on this, on this uh, Think Bigger podcast. Thank you very much, Herman Mashaba. Thank yeah. you so much. Always a pleasure talking to you, uh, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Dan Hiro, back to you. So given the information that we've just heard from Herman and, uh, and Bruce, uh, in my opinion, PSG has the best independent financial advisors in the country. And to navigate through all this noise um, and uncertainty that we are currently experiencing, to be able to plan for our future, to make uh, certain decisions, um, I invite you to contact our independent financial advisors some of the best in the country to help you navigate through this uncertainty. Speak to our financial advisors to, to create, help create certainty in your financial planning, your investments, your short-term insurance. If you're not a client of PSG, I invite you to make contact with us. You can communicate uh, with us on this events registration platform, and I'll ensure that somebody contacts you. Thank you for spending time with us. Um, we hope that this information is going to be valuable to you. And we hope to see you during the course of our next dialogue. Stay safe.